founder of the Prison Education Project and the Rent Integration Academy for Parolees. I'm also a professor and I've also learned my lesson about giving long-winded talks and lectures. A few years ago I was lecturing and a young man in the front row was asleep. So I turned to the guy beside him. I said, John, wake him up. And John said, no, you wake him up, you put him to sleep. <laughs> So I want, to keep my, uh, I want to keep my comments brief. I want to uh, talk specifically for, to the inmates. I run the Prison Education Project. We bring student, university student volunteers, about 300 into seven California prison facilities to tutor in pre-GED math and literacy. Uh, they give academic orientation presentations about their majors. And the objective is to expose the inmates to a potpourri of disciplines and majors. Our graduate students and our community volunteers come in and they do career development workshops. That's on the inside. On the outside, we have the Reintegration Academy. For those of you paroling in Los Angeles, the San Gabriel Valley, every spring we invite 30 parolees to the college campus. For 10 weeks, you come one day a week from 5 to 9.30, and we immerse you in academic development, life skills training, career development. The first day you come to that campus, we give you a meal card. And the philosophy is we want you to be able to meander around that campus, smell the flowers, see the trees, consume the energy of the college campus. We think that transformation takes place with words and sermons and lectures. Maybe it's the organic environment. Maybe it's you walking on that campus, looking at two co-eds, holding hands under a tree that might trigger you to say, I want that life, not the life that I've had. We give everyone, all 30 parolees, everyone a visa card for clothes. The way people perceive you is ultimately the way you perceive yourself. In the fifth week, which was just on Wednesday, we give everyone a free laptop computer. With those laptop computers, we enroll everyone into a community college. I agree with the president of this country it's at the community college that a person can become an x-ray technician, a nurse, a welder. It's at the community college that a person can become an expert in American Sign Language. It's at the community college a person can become an air traffic controller. We work with these parolees on their financial aid, that $5,550 Pell Grant. And we say that education is liberation, but if education is liberation, surely employment is liberation. And in the eighth week, we have a job fair where we invite 25 businesses to this campus to meet, greet, and interview these participants in this program. Now the question is, what are we trying to do? We're trying to embrace what Martin Luther King Jr. called the beloved community, a non-judgmental community a non-discriminatory community. A few months ago, I was asked to give a commencement address at the California Institution for Women in Corona, California. And the night before I gave my speech, I put out what I was going to wear. I put out a sweater, some slacks. And that morning, I woke up, I realized for 17 years I've been teaching at Cal Poly Pomona, and for 17 years I've gone to their graduation. And for 17 years, I put on my graduation robe, my hat, my regalia. And that morning, I said, if my graduation robe is good enough for Cal Poly Pomona, it's good enough for the inmates at CIW. If Harvard asked me to give a commencement address, I would put on my graduation robe and if my graduation robe is good enough for Harvard, is good enough for the inmates at CIW, the inmates at Ironwood State Prison. The problem is we don't see the inmates and the graduates who get their GEDs, who get their vocational education degrees inside prison as having the same potential 
as the students and the graduates of the Harvards of America. And that's the problem. I want to challenge everyone in here. In order for you to reach your optimal potential in life, you must combine the synchronization of your mind, your body, your spirit, your mind. You are what you read, how you deconstruct, how you examine. Your body, your body is your temple, you only have one. Your spirit, when I talk about spirituality, I'm talking about being a humble person. I'm talking about treating the secretary and the janitor the same way you treat the CEO and the president. In the big picture, what's the difference? The second law of thermodynamics suggests that a biological system that stays sedentary would disintegrate. In other words, equilibrium is dynamic. If you want to be mentally fit, you have to engage learning, apply knowledge. If you want to be physically fit, it's not just going to come to you. And if you want to be spiritually fit, if you pray, pray. If you meditate, meditate. But find out what is your raison d'etre? What is your reason to be? What is your purpose in life? No one wants to die without being remembered for something. What are you going to be remembered for? Understand this, the three most important words in our language, love, nothing supersedes love. Love yourself, love the people around you, love life. The second one is humility. Be a humble person. Take the chip off your shoulder. When I say humility, if I come in here and I shake the warden's hand, I'll shake your hand. If I hug the warden, I'll hug you. If I tap dance for the warden, I'll tap dance for you. In the big picture, what's the difference? Be a humble person. And the third concept is forgiveness. People who forgive live six years longer than people who cannot. Learn how to forgive. I know of someone who's double-crossed you, ex-wife, girlfriend, stepmom, stepdad. Let it go. You don't, you don't have to be their best friend. Let it go. So it's your mind, it's your body, it's your spirit. And then I want to challenge everyone in here to have some vision. When I talk about vision, if you look at the chessboard, the worst vision on the chessboard is a vision of the pond. The pond can only go up one and over one. The next best vision, vision of the night, the night can go up two and over two. The next best vision, vision of the rook, the rook can go up and down the, the chessboard, but it has no peripheral vision, and that's dangerous. We know. The best vision on the chessboard is the vision of the queen. The queen can see in the front, in the back, on the sides, on the perimeter, on the periphery. You don't have to know exactly what you're going to do five, ten years from now when you parole, but you know it's going to take hard work and discipline and commitment. And understand this, that in this life, you get what you give. If you give love, you get love. If you give respect, you get respect. And people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Understand that. So it's about vision, having the vision of the queen. I remember going to a place, Cape Town, South Africa. People with no running water outside in the shanties of Gukuletu, Langa, Crossroads, and we complain. People with no electricity and we complain. People living off of one dollar a day and we complain. One out of four women infected with HIV AIDS and we complain. So I looked at this guy who was a part of the Kosa tribe and I asked him, how do you live? How do you survive? How do you keep your head up? And I'll never forget, he looked at me and he said, Ubuntu. And I said, Ubuntu. He said, yes, Ubuntu. I said, tell me about this. He said, Ubuntu means when my neighbor is hungry, I feed him. When I am hungry, he feeds me. Ubuntu is brotherhood, is sisterhood, is community. And whether you believe in God, Allah, Buddha, the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, Mother Nature, Yahweh, when it's all said and done, somebody's going to hold you accountable for what you did down here. The way you treated people, not just your own people, but the way you treated everyone. You're not going to be judged by what type of car you drove, what type of clothes you wore, how many degrees you have how many bombs you can drop on poor countries. You're going to be judged by how you loved. A guy by the name of Benjamin Elijah Mays, who was the president of Morehouse College, he was a mentor to so many civil rights leaders, including Martin Luther King Jr. He said, we have to live with a sense of urgency. And at the end of his speeches, he liked to quote a poem called One Minute. He said, I only have a minute, only 60 seconds in it. 
forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give an account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. And Darwin P. Kingsley stated, and I quote, he said, you have powers that you never dreamed of. You can do things that you never thought you could do. There are no limitations as to what you can do besides the limitations in your own mind as to what you cannot do. Don't think you cannot. Think you can. And good luck to all of you.